So we're asked to draw the free body diagram of the beam, which is pin connected at A and rocket supported at B. Secondly, we need to solve for each of the reactions, and this is going to come from the diagram. So to start off with, let's actually draw the diagram. So we need to take out just the beam part. All right, let's carry first the applied forces. So we have this 500 newtons, and on the end we have the 800 newton meters. And we need to replace the pin and the roller with the equivalent reactions. So we know that a pin is going to um, respond in both a horizontal and vertical reaction. It's not going to have a moment because it's still able to rotate freely about the pin. So if I make a guess at the directions, um, I'm going to say that this is going to the right hand side for the x component. So this is going to be the opposite and point back to the left. And I'm going to say this is pointing down, so my reaction here is going to be up. Okay. Remember if these um, come out as a negative value in the maths, then we've got the direction wrong and we just need to flip it on the diagram. So for the roller here, it's going to react perpendicular to the ground it's sitting on. So since the ground is horizontal, we're going to have a vertical reaction back up here. I'm going to call it BY. So that completes the first part of the question, which is drawing the free body diagram. Now we just need to go ahead and solve for the reactions. So um, I guess it depends how you want to go about it. Um, the first thing though I think I'm going to try and do is get some angles on this diagram. Um, we're going to be able to calculate the angle that this beam sits at and then that's going to help us be able to calculate the angle that this force is applied at. We can see it's perpendicular to the beam, um, but since we've been given horizontal and vertical distances, we're going to need to change this force into horizontal and vertical components, so the angle is going to help us do that. So, to find this angle that the beam is on, I'm going to take out the triangle which sits in here. Okay, It's going to be a right angled triangle. This side is 5 meters, and the total length in here is going to be 12 meters. So if this is theta, you can get it from doing tan inverse, which is the opposite over the adjacent. So theta works out to be 22.62 degrees. All right. So if we want to know the angle that this is applied at with respect to, say, the x-axis, so this is 22.62 in here. If we apply the z rule, so that's where we have a horizontal line here, and a horizontal line here. Find um, the angle with respect to the force itself in here. Alright, so this becomes 22.62 from the Z rule. This is a right angle, so the angle in here needs to be 90 minus 22.62, and this works out to be um, 67.38. Sorry, 38. Alright, so I think we can start um, then using our um, equilibrium equations. So I might start with the sum of forces in the x direction. This one should be pretty straightforward. So in the x direction, we're going to have this ax, which is pointing backwards, so it's negative. These are only in y, so they don't count. We do need to figure out the x component of this. And now that we got the angle in here, it shouldn't be too hard. So we're going to want the cos component with respect to that angle. So it's going to be 500 cos 67.38. And it's positive because the x component is pushing to the right. And this, of course, is a moment, so it's not going to go in a force equation. So if we rearrange, we end up with ax is equal to 192. Um, 0.3 newtons and it's going to come out as a positive value which tells us we have the correct direction in the diagram so it is back to the left. Alright so we have two other equilibrium equations which we can apply. So usually the next one we'd probably look at is sum of forces in the y direction but unfortunately what happens if you try to sum in the y direction you end up with two unknowns in the equation so you're not able to solve it at that point and you'd need to apply the sum of moment um, equation to be able to keep going. So if you're a little bit tactical about it remember for your sum of moments equation 
you're able to pick what point you sum about. So if you pick either point A here or point B here, um, where both of these, um, sorry, where this force acts through point B, both of these act through point A, um, you're going to eliminate one of the unknowns, remembering that we now know this one is 192.3 newtons. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, I might put, pick point A though because it knocks out two that we, we don't need to consider. So I'm going to sum about point A and I'm going to consider the anti-clockwise direction as positive. So the first one that I can think about is going to be BY. So the force is BY. The distance back to point A, remember from the line of action, which is straight up and down here, from this diagram here, I won't bother copying over the dimensions, it's going to be 8 metres. And it's going to try and push us in an anti-clockwise direction about point A. So that's going to make it positive. All right, this one here is a little bit tricky. I'll come back to it in a second. Um, let's deal with the moment on the end. So remember, this is already in moment units or whatever, so it doesn't need to be a, uh, multiplied by the distance. All we need to consider is the direction. So this is going clockwise, which means it's going to be negative, and it can go in our equation as negative 800. All right, so the only kind of tricky one is this 500, and the reason it's tricky is because we need the distances um, back to point A. So if we start with the vertical part, it's not so bad. It's going to be 500 sine 67.38. The distance back to point A over here for the vertical component is going to be the 8 meters. Um, probably see it better in this diagram. So the vertical component back here is 8. And the direction it's going to try and push us about point A is going to be clockwise. So I'm going to make it negative. We then need to consider the horizontal part, which is going to be 500 cos of 67.38. But we need to multiply it by the distance horizontally in here. Okay, so this is the line of action. We need this distance. So unfortunately, we're not given that in the diagram, but we can calculate it. Um, again, if we take a triangle out, we're going to be able to, to find it. So let me take the triangle down here this time. So we know that this distance in here is 8 metres. We know the angle made in here is going to be 22.62 degrees. And we need to know this vertical part that sits in here. Okay, let's call it D. We know it's a right angle. Um, this time if we apply tan of 22.62, it's equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So D on 8. So D is going to be 8 times 10, 22.62. And this works out to be 3.33 meters. Okay, so this is the distance for the horizontal part of this force, and it can go in here. And we need to think about the direction that this moment is going to be causing. It's going to be a clockwise moment, so it needs to go in as negative. So this is going to have to be equal to zero for equilibrium. And now it just is a matter of solving for by. You can see that hopefully by summing about point A, we didn't end up with the other unknown, which was ay in the equation. So simplifying this, we get 8by is equal to, if we swing all of this constant stuff to the other side of the equation, it's 5133. So by is going to be this divided by this, and that comes out to be 641.7 kilonewtons. Um, again, it's come out as a positive value, which means that it's in the correct direction. So by is actually upwards. And we can fill in our diagram a little bit, which will help us in a second. 0.7 kilonewtons. All right, sorry, it's not in kilonewtons. It's just in regular newtons. Since that's what all our other forces are in. All right, so we only have one left that we need to find, and that is AY. So you have the option, if you wanted to, of summing your moments again about another point. Um, that would give you the equation. Um, alternatively, you can just jump onto summing forces in the Y direction, which is probably easiest. So let me scroll this down a little bit. 
So we know that in the y direction, the forces have to be zero. So we've got AY going up. We have a component of the 500 going down. It's going to be the sine component. We have BY going up, and we know the value of it now. And this is a moment, so it's not going to go in the force equation. So if you go ahead and solve for this, it comes out to be negative 180.1 newtons. Okay, so it's come out negative. That means that in fact the direction of this is um, wrong. It needs to be downward. So AY is actually equal to 180.1 newtons down. And I would probably then correct my diagram um, so that I had my force the other way. It's going to be downwards, 180.1 newtons. All right, so that's the answers to my question. So I found each of the reactions um, for AY and AX and also the reaction at the roller at B. So that's all there is. Um, see you in the next video.